Does hyperbaric oxygen help those suffering from hearing loss? The answer is generally yes. Why? Number one, to understand anatomy a little bit, the oxygen supply to the cochlea is not enormously sufficient. In other words, under normal circumstances, without any trauma or inflammation or infection, sure, you and I right now, hopefully, are getting enough oxygen perfusion to the cochlea to be nourishing it and feeding it and having it function well. But because the direct supply is a little bit challenged, it doesn't take a lot of trauma or inflammation to start blocking it. If we start to establish a little bit of inflammation or if there's an infection in the area or there's some amount of disruption of gas exchange, it doesn't take a lot of that disruption to all of a sudden become even mildly hypoxic. As it becomes mildly hypoxic, we can start to see pretty significant changes in our ability to hear. One type of hearing loss called idiopathic neurosensory hearing loss is actually an on-label indication for hyperbaric. There are very few on-label indications for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. There's only about 14 on the FDA-approved list, but idiopathic neurosensory hearing loss is one of them. Let's break that word down. Idiopathic means we don't know the cause. Neurosensory means it's actually nerve-related. The actual nerve to our ear that's conducting those sound signals is being affected, and that's what's causing the hearing loss. In those cases, if you look up idiopathic neurosensory hearing loss, you'll see that we don't know the cause, although it does appear to be inflammatory in nature and may be viral in nature. And so with viruses will come your immune system's approach to trying to deal with that virus, which is an immune response, also causing further inflammation. But other things like trauma, loud noises, could also create similar amounts of traumatic damage leading to inflammation, leading to nerve damage, and therefore hearing loss. So what can we do to reestablish proper gas exchange? Well, if you watch a lot of our other videos, we're always talking about what hyperbaric does, which is increase the concentration gradient of oxygen. Oxygen has to flow from high concentration to low concentration, and we need an established concentration gradient to allow oxygen to flow down. And so what we need is to establish a higher concentration of oxygen on the other side of that damage, which will help drive an increased amount of oxygen through the perilymph in order to nourish that entire area. Using hyperbaric, depending on how much pressure we use, what percentage of oxygen they're breathing, and the frequency and duration of the sessions, we can increase that concentration gradient somewhere between five and 10 times higher amounts of oxygen, driving much more oxygen to that tissue and allowing it to heal, reducing the inflammation, and helping to spark nerve regeneration. So in cases of idiopathic neurosensory hearing loss, hyperbaric is very effective. If you look at the literature, what you'll find is that most of that needs to be done at higher pressures. So above two atmospheres, typically 2.2 to 2.4 ATA on 100% oxygen. And in the literature, it'll say somewhere that the treatment window is between two weeks and three months, meaning that's the window we have to begin treatment as a timeline to really have the most effect. Okay, so we need to be treating somebody inside that two week to three month time frame in order to get the best results. That being said, we've definitely treated people well outside that range and have still seen some great improvements. Have we restored all hearing? Not necessarily, but have we still restored a lot, a high percentage of that hearing? Yes, we have in many cases. Also in the literature, you'll see that there's other treatments. So steroid use, specifically, some people do oral steroids in this situation. Many will do steroid injections. With direct steroid injections, many studies will show somewhere between a mid to high 70s percentage of a response if all they did was steroid injections. With hyperbaric alone, the studies show somewhere between the high 70s and low 80s as a response rate for those if all we did was hyperbaric. And for those that combine steroid injections along with hyperbaric, the results show somewhere between the mid to high 80s, up to 87 to 89% response when combining both in these cases. This is a very scary thing for many people, and most people will do whatever they can to restore their hearing. And so it wouldn't be uncommon to have somebody doing some steroid injections and hyperbaric simultaneously trying to get the best response possible. Even if we were to look at other sources of hearing loss, particularly traumatic events leading to increased levels of inflammation, again, the sooner we can get access to that patient, the sooner we can deliver oxygen to that area, the quicker we can reduce the inflammation, the higher the response rate should be. 
We've treated many people in different phases of that healing response, and we've certainly seen a lot of very favorable results. However, if this is a very chronic hearing loss and the hearing loss is significant and the nerve damage is very significant and it's years outside that window, it may be too late. We would still typically recommend a minimum of 20 hours of treatment just to see if we can start creating a new healing response and wake up some of that dormant tissue. And if we start seeing some changes, then continuing on might be appropriate. But if we introduce 10 to 20 hours and virtually not see any changes whatsoever, then we would typically discontinue treatment at that time, okay? I hope that helps answer some questions with regard to hyperbaric oxygen and hearing loss. Thanks again for your attention, and we'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.